basically I practice uh, four things. I practice uh, a style called Ryukyu Kenpo, a style called Ishinru. These are both Okinawan approaches to the martial arts. I practice uh, Kobe Jitsu, Okinawan weapons, and I practice Tai Chi Chuan. And in Ishinru, there is a little piece of film of the founder of Ishinru. His name is Tatsuo Shimabuku. And he's doing a technique. Uh, there's this movement in Ishinru that we have. You go like this, and you kick. And you go like this, and you kick. And it's kind of a low round kick, kind of off to the side. And we were told the usual, yeah, guy's charging at you. You move out of the way. You kick him as he goes by, that kind of stuff. But there's film of Tatsu himself doing the move, and this is what he does. He applies Kotogaish right here. And then we see him do this. As a pressure point practitioner, I went, oh my goodness, that's the real deal. But I can't really do it. I mean, look at how tall uh, Luke is compared to me. And yet, the distance between us, that, that disparity of height, still isn't quite enough for me to, I can kind of get in there, but not comfortably. Tatsuo himself was just over five feet. Um, but his teacher was Chotoko Kian, and Kian was a big influence on, on, uh, on Tatsuo Shimabuku. And Shimabuku, when he initially trained, um, you know, he was average for Okinawan, but very, very quickly, he found himself in a situation where the problem he was trying to solve was, how do you fight against Americans? And Americans were huge relative to the average Okinawan. And then later on, the Americans became his students and were actually training with him. And so here he is, this little guy, these big, tall Americans, and the stories that they would tell later about how strong he was and how powerful meant they didn't understand where he was hitting them. Now look, this, this is closer to the kind of thing that the average Okinawan experiences. So if Len applies the Kotogaishi, the uh, wrist reversing technique, now, all of Luke's weight is on this leg. And her, quote unquote, roundhouse kick goes into the inside of this leg. Go ahead. And he crumbles onto the leg. He actually falls onto the leg that's collapsing. And that's very, very bad for the leg. Now, <clears throat> when she kicked him, you saw his leg give away. And, and, and she gave him a little twist to send him my way so I could catch him. What we, that's the nice way. When I apply Kotogaish, I can actually control where he goes. I can send him that way. Or I can put a little hook in it so he goes straight down. If I send him straight down, but I've taken this leg out, and it's all crumbled over, and he's falling into it, that's what's happening. And you see, this is a very serious technique. But for me, the, the most important observation was, that's a technique for a little person against a bigger person. And if I was going to do that with him, I would have to do a different technique. I would actually do this with my knee and then kick the other leg that way. In other words, I would do this as my technique, as my application. So let's look at one more technique. In, in uh, the particular version of Kushanku, that is done in Nishinru, there is a movement uh, where you, there are several moves where you kneel down. There's this kick, you kick, and you turn around, and you kneel down. I was told initially, oh, someone is kicking you, so you duck and block their kick. I'm standing here, and he's kicking me, so I'm going to duck to block his kick? What if it has to do with principles that are going to allow someone who is smaller to use um, their body to the maximum effect. He's going to reach out, he's going to choke her or something like that. She is going to be hitting his arm. This point is known as a chaser or lung five. And he falls on her knee. Now when she does the, the churanuke, this motion brings her elbow into his back, his spine, or his head, depending on where he lands. But his chest impales itself on her knee. You see how serious a technique this is? Kata is serious business. And within different styles are different flavors, emphases, qualities that come out. 
This brought me to the conclusion that one of the characteristics of the Ishinru style is Ishinru style is small person against large person, that that's one of its emphases. Wrote about that in um, Black Belt Magazine, the early part of, the, of this century. So a style like Ishinru it really is a style that's suited to a smaller person against a larger person. Other styles are suited for larger individuals. Sometimes people will ask, what is the best style? As a result of my years of study, I think the best answer is this. What's the best style for you? I'm Chris Thomas. These are some reflections from the master class. Thanks for watching. Now go train.